A few years back, I was discussing the level of confidence and lack of humility required to call yourself the foremost expert in something. For example, there's an electronic musician who calls himself the godfather of controllerism, or I once saw a Facebook profile of a woman who called herself the goddess of dog grooming, and it made me wonder, what am I the foremost expert in? I would love to call myself the king of midi guitar, but that title definitely would be better suited to somebody like Roy Wooten or Alan Holsworth. People were doing it when I was a little kid. Even more notably would be Pat Metheny. He was playing GR300 solos to sold out stadiums, and more recently, he controlled an entire orchestrion with a midi guitar. So let's call it Pat Metheny is the king of mid. What's that? Oh, apparently, according to Bongo Boy Records, Les Fradkin is the king of midi guitar. Here's some album art of him uh, at a throw pillow factory. I actually found this website by searching who is the king of MIDI guitar, and it's a pretty much endless hole of content. There's a Bongo Boy TV channel, there's a Bongo Boy magazine that has a pit bull of the month on it, and as you would expect, there's a lot of dad rock, but there's some pretty good instrumental music in there as well. Speaking of weird, beautiful, old school things, that reminds me of the VG99, my favorite guitar processor of all time. And it came out in 2007 and it blew the socks off of every other guitar processor on the planet. I used this as a guitar processor in my studio. I used it as the main guitar processor of my shows for over 13 years. And throughout that long period of time, I had the sinking feeling over the years that Roland was abandoning its flagship GK MIDI guitar stuff. That is until November of 2019, when I saw a press release that Roland slash Boss would be releasing an update to their GK flagship series. I reached out to them and the closest I could get was a PR company that was gonna send me a loaner unit to review for this channel in December. But then December turned into January. And at that point I was going to NAMM. So I was like, hey, can I just bring this back to my hotel for a night or bring it to a booth where I could just privately check it out and give it a solid review. And that never happened. And I just ended up talking to this guy. To make a frustratingly long story short, by the time that this thing actually showed up on my doorstep, all of our last turned into a shitty remake of I Am Legend and all of my future tour dates got canceled where I was hoping to use it. But finally, you and me, let's talk MIDI guitar and let's take a look at Boss's new flagship MIDI guitar device, the SY-1000. Hi, I'm the Flashbulb and this is Improvised MIDI Guitar. last couple of years, I've been building this setup for my guitar that has no computers, no visual interfaces, no backing tracks. And the goal is to be able to write music with my guitar in real time and bring it to any direction that I want. So it's worth mentioning that for decades I've been recording performing, touring with Roland's 13-pin style of MIDI pickups, such as the one you see here. I get asked a lot about MIDI guitar because when most people see it, they imagine themselves playing guitar and then just a beautiful version of MIDI coming out. And I think it's really worth tapering those expectations. If I were to just take the signal from this pickup, convert it to MIDI, and then send it to something like Serum, for example, and I don't know, play some Oasis chords, it would just sound like absolute chaos. And the reason for that is because guitar are very unpredictable instruments. There's a reason why piano beds are typically the controller of choice for synthesizers, and it's because guitars just have too many loose variables. They go out of tune. There's different tunings that you could use, that you could have vibrato, uh, pitch bends. Most people don't really think about it, but the slight variations in which you pick or pluck a guitar string puts different overtones in what you're actually hearing. And I think most importantly, chords on the guitar sound really good only on the guitar, but when you convert them to something where you expect a piano piano chord to be played, it's actually a really weird inversion. I would actually say that there are enough boundaries and unspoken rules that you only really get with practice and time to say that the MIDI guitar should be thought of as a different instrument entirely. Just like there are songs that you would write for a nylon string classical guitar, and then there's songs that you would write for a heavily distorted eight string guitar, there are songs that you would write for a MIDI guitar. But with enough practice and dedication, it's extremely rewarding and cool. There are quite a few options or companies that offer options to retrofit a guitar in some way that will have it output MIDI. But in my opinion, 
Roland's 13-pin system is king. Not only is it born out of many generations of research and development that frankly gives it the most accurate note tracking, but most importantly and brilliantly, this pickup has actually six different pickups, one for each string, and then it sends it through a pipeline into Roland's modeling engines. This means you could do really crazy things. For example, you could change tuning between different guitar patches, or for example, you could have different impulse responses being modeled for each different string, allowing you to really convincingly emulate something like an acoustic guitar or even a banjo. Realistically, this stuff is a lot more useful and powerful than simply just being able to play a piano sound by playing the guitar. One is a gimmick, the other is a huge leap forward in guitar modeling. When you dig really deep into something like the VG99's output stream of velocity data, aftertouch data, auxiliary message data, and then output it to the overtones of the modeled sound, you could get really, really crazy, unique sounds. I have no sponsorship or personal connection with Roland in any way. However, this technology has been the heart of my live performances for the last 20 years. To be honest, I was actually a little bit incensed that the first First time I got to put my hands on a unit like this and practice it out was like in this massive feed bank at NAMM with hundreds of other guitarists and I couldn't even hear myself think. So before we dive into the SY1000, I need to point out how confusing this product line is. Uh, let's just call them 13 pin devices. Some of them are under the company name of Boss, some Roland. If you haven't figured it out by now, they're both the same company. The SY1000 uses a GK style pickup. You can buy a GK3 for about 250 bucks and install it on your favorite guitar, or you could buy a guitar with the GK system already installed. You can install them in under an hour if you're just looking for functionality, or you can have them drilled in and retrofitted into the body and wiring of your guitar. I have a Godin guitar, for example, with a GK built in, but otherwise, I typically install them on the outside because I tend to abuse them a lot from touring, which inevitably means that I have to periodically replace them. This is the GR55. It has a tiny bit of modeling and a lot of PCM sounds, like the worst piano emulation you've ever heard. These two are the VG88 and VG99, which are no longer being manufactured. At the time of their release, they were the most powerful guitar processors in the world. And like I mentioned before, it focused on modeling six different pickups rather than simply playing synth sounds with the guitar. It was a huge innovation that essentially created a new instrument. Then this is the GP10. It's like a shareware version of the VG99. And it actually doesn't even have a DIN MIDI out, so I've almost completely ignored it. Then there's the SY300, which looks very similar to the SY1000 and is obviously in the same product line, but it doesn't even have a GK input. So while it's a guitar synthesizer, it operates completely differently than everything else I've mentioned thus far. And finally, this is the SY1000, the new guy who hopefully blends the best of all of these worlds into one. And some of these processors that I just listed also have alternative bass versions. But no more. I'm actually very happy that Boss now allows you to use the SY1000 as both a MIDI bass and MIDI guitar processor. Unfortunately, I don't know if I made my viewers more or less confused by explaining all of that, but I suppose now would be a good time to hear the SY1000. So let's boot it up. I'm looking at the screen and I actually see a little bit of oddities. I don't know if that's... hopefully I have a good unit. This is our first default preset. And I have nearly half a dozen MIDI capable guitars with the GK3 pickup, but the one that we're using is my favorite guitar ever. It's basically at one point was a Schecter, now it's a Frankenstein, but it has that GK3 pickup right down here. Every MIDI pickup installation on a guitar has slight differences from one another, such as the very, very minuscule distance between the string and the pickup, since there's six different pickups. And so before I actually dive into even hearing this thing, I want to make sure that this guitar is fine-tuned for it, which shouldn't take too long. I've actually not looked at the manual or anything for this, but I assume that it is the same as Boss or Roland's other settings on their other units, because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay, it ain't broke, but they changed it a little bit, but I did find what I was looking for. And so this screen tells you the sensitivity of each of the six pickups. Seems like the A, the D, and the G are the ones that are actually really oversensitive. 
if you notice when I played the strings as hard as I can, it looks like it's a bunch of VU meters peaking. I actually don't know if that's not suggested, but this is probably my fourth or fifth MIDI guitar device from Boss that uses this type of system. And I actually noticed that if it peaks around here, that's when I seem to have the best feedback from the MIDI conversion. So to be totally honest with you, I don't actually know if there's a right or wrong way to do this, but I would hedge my bets that you just give it the setting that feels the best for you as a guitarist, and that's what you should stick with. All right, Dynamic Solly, the first preset. <laughs> doesn't really work that well with chords. This is not tracking that well. Actually, I think it's tracking fine, but the envelope on the synth is slow. It's weird to me that they would choose this as like the default preset of the entire unit when it doesn't really track that well. One cool thing is that we could change presets from the pickup itself, so we don't need our feet or hands. Warm horn. All right. All right, ready? 12 string orchestra. This one doesn't sound terrible, but I would definitely tweak the hell out of it, but let me try it with finger picking. Discovery. I feel like a major seventh was a little bit too far of a discovery for this preset, so let's discover something a little more palatable. Okay, maybe we should only be discovering major chords. There we go. Eh. Rotary organ. Let me guess. Sounds like a poor emulation of a rotary organ. Yep. Strings pad. Let's see if this one could handle that E major seventh. I'm actually sitting here thinking what audience would be lame enough to enjoy that, and I cannot think of one. Thank you for coming out. This is Wounded Star. <laughs> GR300 Deep Rev. Reverb, maybe? Reverse? Rev like an engine? The GR300 is a very early guitar synth from Roland, and kind of classic sounding if you listen to the likes of Pat Metheny or something. Yep. It's funny how iconic Pat Metheny is that I don't even want to bend a string when playing a patch like this. Yeah, like that just sounds weird. I would guess that since Pat Metheny's a jazz guitarist and uses thicker strings on a hollow body, he has sort of formed the habit of sliding into notes rather than bending up to them. I hope I don't get a copyright strike for doing this. Crystal's synth. This is one of those things where I just have low hopes. Sitar and pad. I suppose you would need like eight gauge strings to actually be able to bend where a guitar bends. It's actually not that bad for a sitar model. I almost wish that they had a sitar guitar model, like the old Strawberry Letter 22 song or something. All right, I'm going to show you something cool. You can tune everything at once. Tuning is much better and much more accurate since you have six different pickups. The name speaks volumes. I would try and do some sort of like classical medieval thing, but it's actually not tracking that well, again, due to the synth design, not due to the pickup or the tracking system itself.
hard fault base. Okay, so this should showcase the superpower of this boss system. And this should really be in like the first three presets because it's really, really useful. You can retune the guitar digitally. So for example, um, this looks like it's an open G, which it sounds like in my headphones, but if you listen here, How crazy is that? So with one preset, you could just jam with an open G. Yeah. I mean, this, this is obviously stupid, but what it does tell me is that there's a sequencer that I might be able to bind to different parameters, which would be cool. But, uh, yeah. Flashback to what I wonder. Okay, I mean, that's 80s sounding, but again, it's gimmicky. Yep, that's about the extent of that. Overtone lead. Saturn. Vintage Sin Brass. If you're in a Van Halen cover band and don't feel like paying your keyboardist anymore to play Jump. Flutie guitar. Warm Dread, not. This is a, an acoustic simulation. So this is the value over a Fishman MIDI pickup, in my opinion, is that you do have this guitar modeling. This is something I'll dive a lot deeper into when we start editing presets, because if you want to turn an electric into an acoustic, at least back with my VG99, if this is the same modeling system, it's the best you're going to get. This is actually really useful. It doesn't sound like much, and it's really the most basic function that a MIDI guitar could have. But if you have a looper and you're trying to make a full song, this is what you want for bass. You don't want any of the fancy, filtery sounding stuff most of the time. You just want a bass. Super shimmer. <laughs> Another clean guitar. I'm actually really excited to check out the cab modeling and sort of the clean presets without using any synth sounds or gimmicks because I do think that the cab modeling is where this might shine. There's just no use for this. This is a 12 string emulation and it seems like both E's will be dropped to D's. I don't even know what this one sounds like, but thank you everybody for coming out. My band's name is Pulsar Pizza. Yup, fooled you again. Is this like a song reference that I'm not getting or something? You know what I wish this preset actually symbolized? That somebody, after spending well over $1,000 to buy this unit, got up to this preset and said, it said, fool do again, and then all the presets were actually useful and good afterwards. But I have a feeling that's not going to happen.
that's a start, although I feel like I hit a poly limit, and I don't know if it was my playing or that, but we'll find that out later. Look, this is actual distortion on the cab model. Doesn't sound that bad. It actually sounds really good, but one thing that I noticed, and this might not even be a thing, it might only just be with this preset or just this moment, but my VG99 never had this problem. My artificial harmonics were different than how I wanted them to be. They were like at a different harmonic and they were a little bit harder to play. For those of you who don't know what an artificial harmonic is, I could play this, or I could play this, depending on how I'm picking the string. There are probably 800,000 videos on YouTube that could explain better than I can how to learn how to play artificial harmonics or when or why to use them. Almost has this Eric Johnson vibe. All right, moving on. Meh. I don't really know what the reference is. There must be a song called Across the Lake or maybe one called Across the Pond or something and they just didn't want to violate any <laughs> trademark or copyrights. So we're using the tuning system in this preset to drop the D and this is more of a modern metal tone. Actually, if it's me playing this style of music. Wow, how ambient. Preset is like so fundamentally broken. I'm done with these presets. I feel like we're headed towards a bad review because I'm just reviewing the presets. And the ones that I'm actually digging a little bit or sticking on or having fun playing are the ones that have no MIDI guitar involvement whatsoever. They're just things I could do on an amp in the other room. And that's not what this product is for. But if this is what it claims to be, which is like the MIDI pickup modeling of a VG99 plus more advanced effects, plus a subtractive synth, I think that there's actually a lot of potential if we start making our own presets. Realistically, with like a price point of getting into MIDI guitar above $1,300, anybody who turns this thing on in the first couple presets, their mind should be absolutely blown with the technology that it's using. But I'm 72 presets in, and I've found nothing that I would even intentionally sit and play just to practice. That's really, really bad. So let's just say that the presets are gimmicky at best, and if you bought one of these units, you could probably do a lot better uh, downloading third-party presets or something like that. This doesn't actually change all that much for me because out of the Roland synths I have and the Boss Multi effects I have, I don't think I've ever turned them on and gotten presets that blew me away. I don't know why they don't hire people to make better presets, but it's just a thing. There's no way that I thought that I would turn this thing on and then have a complete experience. I knew I'd be diving in. So let's hope to God that editor is really intuitive and fun to work with because I'm going to be spending a lot of time there for the rest of this video. So let's do that. All right, so we are clearing a user preset. 
starting from scratch. And uh, if this is anything like uh, my other V guitar systems, it should just start me with a dry guitar sound, if anything at all. <laughs> That's not what happened. So we have three different instruments, three different additional effects. And I hope that there's a way to change this algorithm. I think there is. Um, but we'll find that out in a minute. First, let's look at this. We don't want that. How about an electric guitar? Imagine that. That'd be crazy. Okay. The reverb's on for some reason. What else is on? Noise suppressor's on. Amp's on. It's not really an initial preset, is it, if all that stuff's on? I actually want to believe that this has a 32-bit processor in it, so it probably can have a bit more of a complicated reverb algorithm. Man, all these multi-effects always have terrible reverb, so... Uh, I don't have that many options, but let's try these. Let's turn it up to max. And... Density. And let's just do it. That's a bunch of comb filters. Try all one. This one's a bit better. It still sounds very delay-y. Uh, let's try the plate. That's supposed to sound smoother. Probably my favorite of the bunch so far. Huh. You know what's kind of an this one doesn't really sound all that stereo. I mean it does, but it doesn't like give you that spacious feel. You know, I bet if you were to mix the mod and the hall one you would actually have a pretty good sounding reverb algorithm in here. But if you're buying a multi-effects for a good reverb, unless you're spending five or $6,000 on a H9000 or something, you're not gonna really get any good reverb. So just taper your expectations in general. All right, so let's go back to instrument. This is where we can do our alt tuning. So like an open E and turn that on, the on knob, that binary knob. Yes. Ooh, D model. Ooh, Nashville. I actually use Nashville for some of my acoustics. I actually string them that way. It sounds really nice. I feel like Nashville tuning is pushing the limits of a device like this unless you had a really, really powerful uh, effects engine. It messes up a little bit, but it's not terrible. It's better than it was with the VG99. It's so Nashville tuning is basically every other string is an octave up. And then we have user tuning, which is nice. So we also have a 12 string editor. So this is the level of the resonant string and then this is the delay. So I'm gonna turn off the tuning stuff and now let's look at the guitar. Ah, you know, I'm kind of, I wish that they would have graphics here. I wish that they would just show you a picture of the style of guitar. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, this is like a Telecaster, it's like a Rickenbacker. Um, I'm sure the manual explains a bit more about this, but this isn't even for me. This is just for like your average guitarist. I feel like that would have so much value to just have an image, or even if it's just a piece of clip art of the type of guitar. So it's like a classic, modern, and then you could select which pickup you're using. So I guess if I use the front, it'll be a little warmer. Oh yeah, that sounds really nice. And I could probably use both, but I actually don't need to, and we'll get into that in a minute. Now amp, again, we don't really have any sort of pictures. Oh man, we even have microphones here. So it's like a full modeling environment, which is really, really cool. But 
damn it, I wish we had some photos or something to just sort of give us a more graphical idea of what we're doing. It's really nice. Uh, this is noise suppression. Don't... I don't really have, we don't have a need for this, but whatever. And then this is just an equalizer, which in my opinion, we don't need right now. I kind of like the warmth of this. All right, so then we have an effects chain and these are usually pretty rich. Yeah, all right. These, there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, Harmonist, this is, does what it sounds like it does. Let's actually enable it. It can stick you in a certain key. Um, so let's have two different harmonies. Humanizer. What the hell? Oh, so this is like a vowel filter. All right. For some reason, when I thought humanizer, I was thinking like what you would do to MIDI with a humanizer, where you just make all the notes off time or whatever. Lo-fi, I have a feeling that this is just a bit reducer. Octave bass yeah these are helpful Ooh, do we have like more reverb options if we use this kind or is it the same old story yeah, same old story okay sound hold let's hear how that let's hear how good the sound hold is Ugh. you know You know, I, I just don't, I don't understand why they can't make a higher quality sound hold in 2020. Like, that would have been a huge feat 15 years ago when processors were limited to what they were. You know, I just don't understand why we can't have, you know, I just don't understand why they wouldn't make a better sound hold in 2020. I could actually understand back 15, 20 years ago when we didn't have the ARM processors that we have today. But now you can just make a three to four grain sound hold and it's just nothing on the CPU. And this, this just sounds bad. Like there's not even an option to change the buffer of it. Cause the whole idea is that you just want a steady sounding hold, right? I mean, I guess it could be useful to some extent. I wonder if I could fade it out and change this algorithm up here, but I think it's the same sound hold that they had in the VG99, which is just like, why? Why didn't, why didn't you just, you know? Give a developer one day to make an I mean there's open source stuff on GitHub that could have better sound holds than this. I just feel like I'm shitting on this thing too much, but you gotta say it. So I guess right now it would be safe to say where'd my reverb go? What? Why do I not hear reverb anymore? What am I missing? Weird. That was a bug. All right, so now we have a second instrument that we put over it, and I am excited to see what the guy at NAM was talking about when he said that this has a full subtractive synth. Not digging the attack, but maybe they allow me to edit the envelope. LFO1, LFO2. Come on, where's the envelope editor? Please tell me you have an envelope editor. Where is the envelope editor? There better be an envelope editor on this synth. Okay, so it's referring to an envelope. Can I turn an LFO into an envelope? No. By the way, I'm not like having a stroke for some reason. Uh, the knobs are really sensitive. So if I just turn it a tiny little bit, it goes to like a hundred. Right off the bat, I just want to fix the timing of the synth. Cause it just isn't fast enough or reactive enough and I know it's not the tracking the tracking's fine it's just that synth <sighs> I guess there must be a different envelope window yeah maybe I'm just missing something maybe there is a different envelope window so I'm gonna have to look at the manual and refer to it going through this manual and I've not been able to see anything about envelopes uh let me just search envelopes envelope Enva. Nothing. Really? Maybe the PDF just sucks. LFO. Okay. What if I search amp? Okay. We got 35 instances. Okay. So it's finding the text just fine. Uh, Roland. 
22. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there's no mention of envelopes. <laughs> Env isn't there. Filter. No mention of filter. Jesus fucking Christ. I guess there's also a reference manual. And of course I have to like read an agreement. That wasn't that helpful, but maybe I'm the dummy and I'm just missing something here. When I was told that there was subtractive sense in here, I think I just imagined something entirely different. So here's our attack. Decay. Okay, now I should have a lot of release. Okay, we're off to a start, I suppose. Okay, so just so I'm clear, the dynamic synth is not a normal subtractive synth. Yeah, that, I only have attack. You turn the attack down and it takes longer. I mean, not like you would expect Roland to know anything about synths. Let's make filter envelope depth. <laughs> I really do wonder what the poly count is. All right, so I just want to make a pad that like follows my guitar in a really pretty way. And then this could edit the pitch just a little bit. LFO. And then we just need loads and loads of reverb and delay. So, okay, I'm liking this pad. I think this pad sounds pretty rad. I almost want this to be like tuned out in the center now. And this one to be a little lower. And this one to be a little louder. Mm. I wish I could add more than one effect here. I bet I could. No, wait, what is this one? This effect is the acoustic resonance, which I want. So, I guess, what if I don't put a third instrument and I just drag and drop this effect right here? Will that work? Nope. Right here, maybe? Oh, it will. Oh, sweet. Okay, so now effects three can be a delay. And please have tape, please have tape, sweet. Okay, now I could actually lower this effect level a bit. And now we have tape delay. Well, if we can't sync it, then 500 milliseconds would be a quarter beat on 120 BPM. And so let's go to 750 to make it a little funky. Effect level, carryover. Well, I mean, if we have tape, how come I can't edit, edit any of this stuff? Hmm. Mod. Warp twist. Yeah, I don't need anything that fancy, boys. So another thing I want to do is pan pan things around a little bit more. Um, do I have that option? Maybe I'm just missing it, or... Yeah, I could pan the strings. That's fancy. Any panning on my LFO? Um, this one, this is balance. Maybe that'll pan. Uh, that'll pan my A and B. Yeah, I wish that I could just, like, have an LFO here, like one of these effects things, or have an LFO from some other instrument, and then just string it into this. And I'm going to spend a long time trying to figure out if I can, because that's really what makes this a really powerful tool or a very limited tool unfortunately. Turn on this other instrument, which is my guitar. All right, first preset. Let's hear it.
Now, maybe I'm just biased, but let's say that I went to Guitar Center and I spent 200 and some change on the pickup and then studied and installed it or paid a luthier to install it and then spent over $1,000 on this SY1000 and hooked it up for the first time, powered it up, and, you know, played a little two-string harmony like I did just there. I would be much happier hearing that than any one of the 72 presets that I heard before. You were here with me to watch me open this up for the first time and make my first presets, and I don't think that this is a testament to how good I am at making presets, because clearly I'm just a regular guy playing around with things. What this is more is a testament to how... And it's also not so much a testament to how bad the presets are that ship with this thing, but just more how off-target they are. The reason I'm stuck on this so much is that when somebody tests out a unit like this in a Guitar Center or a Sam Ash or wherever they could sit down and play with it, they're not editing presets. They're playing with the first five sounds that they see, and that determines whether or not they're going to buy the product. Even more so, there's plenty of YouTube videos of this exact product where they're just going through the factory presets, where they're not actually going into the editor or not doing anything like that. I like diving in deep and customizing everything down to a decimal point, but a lot of guitarists don't. A lot of guitarists just want to play guitar and sound good. So while I'm a little underwhelmed that we have this sort of node-based system of making presets, yet I can't put an LFO to a specific thing, or at least I haven't figured out a way yet, I do think that the presets give this product a great disservice, and that disservice is actually going to end up with loss of sales. So rather than this video being 15 hours long, I think I'm going to spend some time playing around, making some presets at my own pace, and then we'll come back and we'll listen to them, and then we'll go over the presets and see how they're built up in here, and if there's any sort of... I guess, tricks or hacks that I learned, or if I did figure out the LFO thing, or if the sequencer is at all powerful, any of that stuff, we'll learn then, and then we could just sort of go over the pros and cons, and yeah. All right, so I've spent the better part of a night and a day making a bunch of presets for this thing and getting to know it inside out, and one thing I want to say before I even get into this is this thing makes some nasty noise when it's hooked up to your computer. Uh, it can work as an audio interface, but I would never use it that way. Just It is the noisiest audio interface or the noisiest USB device I've ever hooked up to my computer. I don't know if it's mine. I don't really have any intention of using it hooked up to my computer this way through USB. If I actually just wanted to trigger a uh, soft sense or something, I would just have a DIN MIDI out from the back of it. But ugh. All right, so this one is called Bass Chips, and... This editor is very slow. It takes a while for everything to catch up. Like, I just pressed a button there. Come on, keep going. Come on, let's go. Yeah, like, it's... It's pretty abysmal to work in. I thought it was fine at first, but it's not fine. This thing needs a lot of work. Uh, someone described it on a V Guitar forum as, like, watching Lucy and Ethel at the Chocolate Factory. And I'm going to put a clip of that for anybody who... But that's exactly what it feels like. Everything tries to catch up. It loses some operations as I'm doing it. So anyway, as I go through this preset, bass chips. We're using two instruments. The first one is just an electric bass model. The electric bass models in this thing actually sound quite good. And then the second instrument, it's instrument three here, but we're only using two, is a synth. And that synth is only on the top two strings of my guitar. And the bottom four strings sound like a bass and so that you can see the effects chain here as far as effects i don't think we have anything too fancy going on i'm gonna keep pressing this button and hope to get it there's a defretter i don't it doesn't really sound all that defretted harmonist this is something that only those who've had the vg99 or some other really high-end boss multi-effects will miss but it's really powerful and it's not here in the sy1000 so the harmonist or it's basically an intelligent harmony they have it here but it only works in mono whereas it works polyphonically in the vg99 in the vg99 the auto harmony is actually incredibly powerful and fun to play with here it's like every other auto harmony that you have in every other multi-effect for me that's actually a really big bummer because i like making big swelling pads and i like tuning things up a seventh or tenth or ninth or eleventh 
and then if I can set it to play in A major or something like that, and it will always bump it into that no matter where I'm playing on the guitar. Here, that doesn't really happen because it's not doing it six times, it's only doing it once. I could actually understand why they neutered this. Out of the box, 99.9% .9 of customers aren't even going to realize that it's missing or that it was ever a thing. Um, it's not listed in the manual or anything like that, and it surely takes a lot of power because you're processing a harmony effect six different times, but they neutered it, and it's gone, and I'm sad. Wham. Other than that, we just have two different reverbs, and essentially it's just a bass on four strings and a little synth sound on the top two, and it sounds like this. This one's called Earth Ball. It has three different instruments being used. The third instrument is one called Poly Effects. Poly Effects, I don't really understand. It's almost like, oh, we have a little bit of extra processor power. Why don't you use this? You could have Distortion, Crystal, Rich Mod, Slow Pad, or Touchwa. None of those things really seem to have all that much to do with one another. I think it's just like PCM waveforms, I would guess. So that and VO Guitar, I didn't really find that much use for in this, but... I used it here, I used the distortion one to basically get a distorted pad sound, and then for the rest of that pad sound, we're using a dynamic synth that's just, uh, not, I'm actually not using the synth, I'm just using a filter on the guitar input, which is then going through a slow gear, and then the first instrument will just be your normal subtractive synth. That subtractive synth is going through an EQ, and then you can just see the chain as it goes into the final mix, which is going through a little bit of delay and reverb, and then out. Let's hear it. This one is called Traffic OST, and uh, if anyone's ever listened to Cliff Martinez's amazing score for the film Traffic, you'll understand why I named it that way. And I just basically went strong with the pads here. I have a dual pad here that pitches up to a seventh. I have a, come on, let's go. I have a dynamic synth here, which I'm actually using the synth. It's using a feedback oscillator, and then on the third... I'm, I'm sorry, the lag in this program is so bad that I'm going to have to edit this video quite a bit. Otherwise, it's just going to be me swearing at the screen a whole bunch. So my third instrument is an electric bass. However, it only applies to my low E string, and that will give us an effect like the one you're about to hear.
This one's just called Jazz Beater, and I have a lot like this on the VG99 because when I play live, I like to just have a almost dry guitar signal that sounds generally good over anything or if I just want to start making a loop and improvising. It's a good starting point, and it's very basic. It's just an electric guitar model uh, going into a light chorus, into a light reverb, into a light compressor. Then I believe I put it into another reverb. Yeah, one more reverb, like a plate reverb. Since the reverb's not terribly deep on this unit, if I have enough power left over in my patch, I'll create a couple different ones to sort of have that early ambience and then maybe the later tail. And so I've been doing that a lot. This one, this one, if it ever loads, is, all right, this, this one is called Jazz Hollow. It still has not loaded yet, Jesus Christ. And Jazz Hollow is just an electric guitar very similar to the last one, and, oh my god, and an acoustic guitar simulation. Uh, and I kind of made the body sound very thin and the tone a bit higher because what I'm emulating, obviously, is a hollow body jazz guitar but I'm not playing a hollow body jazz guitar, so it'll hopefully sound like one. I added the effects of some acoustic resonance. Not sure how much of an effect that had. Uh, sort of modeled up a little amp, and then I have just a tiny bit of ambient reverb. <laughs> Finally, we have one I named Sagan Chimes, and I basically tried to make a chime sound with the SY-1000, which is actually really hard. I used three different instruments, all which have subtractive synth engines. Um, the bottom one is actually a bass, uh, which will make sense once you hear how it's played. It's just basically a sine wave bass. There's nothing really that fantastic going on. Uh, the middle one, uh, the middle instrument is a dual oscillator. It's basically the body and one overtone of the chime, just the general note that it's playing. And then the third instrument is the striking sound. And that is using a, come on, load. The striking sound is using a high pass ladder filter. It's going through a very light flanger. Um, then it, all of the above are going through a very light chorus. And then eventually it's just going through some master delay and reverb. Sorry, but I'm going to bitch for a moment. This preset editor needs a lot of work. It's buggy. It runs extraordinarily slow. It's super laggy. And all of the controls are just sort of the same knob. There's not pictures any of the models. Uh, the envelopes don't actually have any sort of indication that's an envelope. You can't actually visualize what you're seeing. You just see a bunch of different knobs. But what annoys me above all is that we have this nice little node-based system, right? I could take this amp and I could just plop it over there. And I could take this delay, and I could just plop it over there like that. 
And that's really amazing. I could take this over here. I could take this, put it over here in the end. I could take this reverb over here and like, look how that divided it. It's really, really nice. Each one of these instruments has two different LFOs each, but I can't assign them outside of this little menu here. I can't assign them to FX2 or I can't assign LFO1 to control the speed of LFO2 or anything even remotely creative. And that's infuriating. So if you didn't think that was frustrating, wait till you see this. Look at this assignment area here, all these different pages. And in these pages, I can click edit and I could, this is my category. I could choose my target such as instrument three. Um, I could change the effects. I could change um, the amp settings. I can scroll, they're all like kind of out of order and hard to find, but I can actually assign external MIDI to uh, the LFO one of the first synth. I could assign it to the low range, the high range, the rise time, the fall time. There's literally pages and pages of this stuff if I want to drag a laptop to a gig with me to run a single LFO that I map to something on the SY1000, but I can't simply just have an LFO here that I plug into somewhere or simply right click here and then have it go somewhere. And I can't do it on the unit either. But when going through all this and seeing that it exists, the good news is that I don't think that this is a limitation with the processor or with the hardware. I think this is just a limitation with being lazy when you're making the software for the unit, which means that this could potentially be patched or fixed in an upgrade. I really actually hate not giving glowing reviews on this channel. I want to spend both my and your time highlighting things that are really cool and worth showing off. And admittedly, this was a very bumpy ride thus far. However, it also is worth pointing out that I had very, very high expectations due to my close relationship with the 13 pin product series thus far. Let's get the cons and disappointments out of the way. The PC editor was an absolute train wreck. At first, it seemed like just about enough, but it just went downhill fast and it got really, really laggy and nearly impossible to use. The device itself does not have a touch screen and I myself am not a huge fan of touch screens. However, maybe a lot of people in the V guitar community will disagree with me, but I just had a lot of trouble working with this UI. Well, obviously I've not been using this thing for years. Something that I kept doing was like enabling or disabling effects or things when I was just trying to select something. Or another example is that I would actually change a perimeter when I was just trying to move the selector around. I truly do think that this could have been entirely solved by adding a movement dial and maybe just two more arrows. So you'd have up, down, left, and right, rather than sometimes these perimeter knobs being movement knobs. And these things do sound somewhat superficial, but if you're not enjoying yourself when editing presets, then why are you doing it? As I mentioned, when I was editing the presets, with the addition of this subtractive synthesizer, there's this wonderful potential for this marriage of a virtual modular environment and a guitar modeling environment, particularly because we're just connecting little nodes. But it's just not that. You have this powerful visual editor but it's limited to only audio signal routing? Why in the world do these LFOs or envelopes have to be bound to the pitch or oscillator of one instrument when I could be using it for other effects? In one instrument, I could have two different oscillators. I could sync both of those oscillators. I could detune both of those oscillators, but I can't map one oscillator into the other oscillator, meaning that there is no FM. Why? Honestly, if this were a Line 6 product or something, I may not give it the same level of criticism, but this is Roland. They are the world's largest and most powerful synthesizer company. They were making modular synths before I was even born. I'm not sure that there's a place in my house where you are more than 10 or 15 feet away from a Roland product that has a powerful virtual analog environment. So why would they not include that in their flagship guitar synth? I hate to say it, but that's why 1000 feels a little bit rushed or lazy. But the good news is, is that a massive firmware update or overhaul could actually fix a lot of the issues that I've named thus far. And as much as I don't want to see audio Audio gear go the direction of Steam early access games, this does have the potential of being a really, really amazing all-in-one 
four pedal unit for guitar. Unfortunately, there are some things that firmware will most likely not be able to fix. And one of those things is that this thing is really noisy when hooked up to a computer. It's so noisy that when I was recording some of the stuff at the desktop, I had turned the volume all the way down and I wasn't even thinking about monitoring the signal. And I'm gonna have to do quite a bit of video editing to make that sound decent. There really is no reason for the SY1000 to double as an audio interface anyway. And if the USB port's only being used to edit presets, then they could have just shielded the ground or removed the ground entirely and just put a resistor in there to protect it. So this was preventable. As I mentioned earlier, while the echoes and reverbs and other effects do sound a little bit better than they used to sound in other 13 pin products, they're still pretty uninspiring. But I can actually understand why you can't pack a super lush, beautiful reverb into a multi effects unit due to the amount of CPU that it hogs. But the cardinal sin is only having one mono effect send and return, which dooms me to using my higher end reverbs at the end of chain rather than within the chain of the four different inputs inside the unit. To be brutally honest, I would trade this for an SY1000 without any onboard effects whatsoever if it only had one or two stereo sends and returns. I think my biggest frustrations are limitations that don't seem like they need to be limitations. For example, the GT1000 has stereo sends and returns. It also has Bluetooth, so you could edit presets on your phone. I have a lot of Roland and boss products that have really intuitive and powerful subtractive synth engines. So why aren't they here? To keep costs down? Well, raise the price. In comparison, the Line 6 Helix costs $1,700. The Axe FX3 costs over $2,000, but it's this GK system that makes this so powerful. And if it was combined with all of Boss's and Roland's strength that they have available, they would suck out all of the oxygen that their competitors breathe. There isn't even a close second. Line 6 has the Variax system, which in my opinion sounds inferior, and I haven't seen a new Variax guitar come out in a while, so it might be being abandoned anyway. Roland and Boss have amazing state-of-the-art cabinet, amp, preamp, speaker, and microphone modeling. And all of that is included in full force in the SY1000. I really like that the SY1000 is a floor unit. The VG99 is neither a rack unit or a desktop unit, and I've had to literally Velcro it to everything over the years when I've toured with it. And that's annoying. But again, why is there not more buttons or why is there not a WAH style control pedal? This thing is pretty heavy and honestly, it should be twice as long. The strengths of this product are so great that they make the preventable weaknesses much harder to swallow. This will inevitably replace my VG99. And that's saying a whole lot because I love my VG99. I just had really, really high hopes. And to Boss and Roland's credit, those hopes are due to standards that they created. There is a huge untapped market for this with electronic musicians. Every single show that I play, every single open interview that I do, every time I look at social media, somebody's asking me what my MIDI guitar setup is like. And my best guess is that, dare I say, Boss and Roland are out of touch. All of the modern, cutting edge, successful pro audio companies listen very closely to their customers. And you may not realize it, but behind the scenes, almost every single time I make a video, the company is reaching out looking for criticism or some sort of feedback so they can help make their product better. I've been a professional electronic musician whose primary instrument is the guitar, and I've been performing for over 20 years using the GK system. Just about every show that I've played in the last 13 years, around the world, millions of video views, you can view this from the audience, yet somehow, neither professionally or personally, I don't know anybody from Roland. I know people from the PR company that Roland hires. I've met salespeople and mascots at NAMM, but when I say out of touch, I mean quite literally. So the big question that you have if you're in the market for this is, should you buy it? And I can't really say no. I think if you already have a VG99 and you don't really need an upgrade, then sure, save yourself a thousand bucks. But virtually every person who has a GK MIDI guitar pickup has been starved from a proper upgrade for a really long time. So it's really hard to not see the SY1000 as a huge improvement. What about if you're just now considering getting a MIDI guitar? Well, this is probably the best way to go. Even if Roland's 13 pin system wasn't as accurate or low latency as it is, 
Like I mentioned earlier, simply converting a guitar signal to MIDI never really works out the way you expect it to. It's like trying to control something that's very precise with something that's very chaotic. While I don't see any massive innovative improvement with this particular product, I still have to hand it to Boston Roland for the way that they handle MIDI guitar as a whole. The way that they approach it and combine it with their sound modeling makes it better than every alternative to an analog guitar pickup that's out there. Again, I hate making videos where I'm not gushing over gear, and Gush and I ain't. If Boss releases a massive firmware update to fix some of these things, I will happily talk about it on this channel and let everybody know. But either way, like I said, there's no doubt in my mind that I'm gonna be spending more time with this and making more presets on it, and I'll probably be using them at some point in this channel. So if you like this video, if you learned anything, give me a subscribe. If you wanna support this channel and get smarter while doing it, I am a partner with Curiosity Stream, and you can access their massive library of documentaries and educational content for less than $12 a year. Click that referral link below. Bye.